Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the protozoa. Protozoa is from the Greek word, which means primitive animal. So, protozoa is a subkingdom in the animal kingdom. In the new system of classification of living things, living things are classified into five kingdoms. And the five kingdoms are Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protoctista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Planty, and Kingdom Animalia. So, Protozoa, which is what we are concerned about in this video, is a sub kingdom under the animal kingdom, under the kingdom Animalia. So, these are the five kingdoms in the new system of classification Kingdom Monera, Kingdom Protoctista, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Planty, and Kingdom Animalia. The protozoa is a sub kingdom, is a sub kingdom under this animal kingdom. So, like I said, what we are concerned about here in this video is the sub kingdom protozoa. So, what are protozoa? Protozoa are microscopic unicellular organisms found in aquatic environment and as endoparasites in the body of higher organisms. So, there are four key words in this definition. First, protozoa are microscopic organisms. That means these organisms cannot be seen with the naked eyes. They can only be seen with the help of a microscope. They are unicellular. That means these organisms are made up of one cell. So, protozoa are microscopic unicellular organisms found in aquatic environment so these organisms are found in aquatic environment or as endoparasites in the body of higher organisms so these are the four key words in this definition they are microscopic unicellular organisms found in aquatic environment and as endoparasites in the body of higher organisms so having known the definition of the protozoa let's look at the features of protozoa so to make the features of protozoa more understanding and easy to remember, we will divide them into three categories. The habitat feature, the body feature, and the system features. We'll be looking at the features of protozoa under these three headings for more understanding and easy remembrance. So let's look at the first one which is the habitat feature. Where can protozoa be found? So, protozoa are found in aquatic environment or as endoparasites in the body of higher organisms. These are the two main places where they can be found. They can either live in the aquatic environment or they live as endoparasites in the body of higher organisms. So, this is very important and vital. You can be asked in an exam that which of the following habitats can protozoa be found? So, they are either found in aquatic environment or as endoparasites in the body of higher organisms. The next category of feature that we have is the body feature. So here we want to describe how the body of protozoa look like. So the first thing that you should know is that most protozoa are unicellular and microscopic and we've established this already in our definition. They are unicellular means they are made up of one cell and they are microscopic simply means they cannot be seen with the naked eyes but with the aid of a microscope so most of them are unicellular and they are also microscopic so when we say most of them are unicellular that indirectly tells us that some of them are multicellular but they are very few also they exist at the cell level of organization of life all protozoa they exist at the cell level of organization of life they are made up of one cell and that is why they are at the cell level of organization of life then another thing that should be noted is that all symmetry are present all symmetry are present in the body of protozoa so and the two main symmetry that we have are bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry so some of them may be bilaterally symmetrical and some are radially symmetrical. So let's assume that this is a protozoa. If this protozoa can be divided only into two equal parts, 
then this protozoa is said to be bilaterally symmetrical. That means it can only be divided into two equal halves. Also, let's assume that this is another protozoa. If this protozoa can be divided into many equal parts, then we can say that this protozoa is radially symmetrical because it can be divided into many equal parts. So the hallmark here is that all symmetry are present in protozoa. Some are bilaterally symmetrical, while some are radially symmetrical. So all symmetry are present in protozoa. Some they display bilateral symmetry, that means they can be divided into two equal halves, while some are radially symmetrical, they display radial symmetry, which means they can be divided into many equal parts. Some are asymmetrical, which means they have no symmetry. They are neither bilaterally symmetrical or radially symmetrical. So some of them, they have no symmetry, which means they are asymmetrical. So having known these key body features of the protozoa, let's look at the system features of protozoa. And the first system we're going to look at is locomotion. So you want to ask yourself, how do protozoa move? So protozoa can move with the aid of a pseudopodia, with a flagella or with cilia. These are the three basic medium through which they move. Protozoa can either move with the help of a pseudopodia, with the help of a flagella, or with the help of cilia. And there are different kinds of protozoa that move with these different locomotory structure. So this is very important. Another feature that is here is nutrition. It is very important to know that protozoa exhibit all modes of nutrition. So some of them are autotrophic which means they can synthesize their own food. They can produce their own food from simple inorganic substances. And a typical example is euglena. Some of them are heterotrophic, which means they depend on already prepared food. They cannot synthesize their own food. And examples of such protozoa are amoeba, paramecium, and euglena. So these organisms are heterotrophic. Then some of them are parasitic, which means that they feed at the expense, at the detriment of a higher living organism. And examples are trypanosome, plasmodium, and opalinata. So it's very important that you know the different examples that accrues to these different modes of nutrition. The parasitic protozoa, trypanosome, plasmodium, and opalinata. It is very important. And we're still going to look at some other examples later in future classes. So having known this, let's look at the other feature that we we'll have here which is osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is simply the maintenance of the salt and water within the cell of the organism. So what they use in carrying out osmoregulation is the contractile vacuole. So all protozoa carry out osmoregulation with the help of a contractile vacuole. This is the structure they use for maintaining the salt and water content in the cell of the organism. Then the other feature that we have here is respiration and excretion. Respiration and excretion in protozoa is by simple diffusion. So this is very important, by simple diffusion. And they use simple diffusion because their surface area to volume ratio is high. So that is why they use simple diffusion. And we're going to explain this later in subsequent videos. Then the last feature that we're going to talk about here is reproduction. How do protozoa reproduce? So reproduction in protozoa can be sexual or asexual. Sexual means of reproduction is usually by fusion of gametes. That is, a male strain will come and a female strain will come. Both of them fuse together to form a zygote and that zygote develops into a new organism. So sexual reproduction is by fusion of gametes, while asexual reproduction is by binary fusion, by multiple fusion or by budding. So this is very important. You can be asked in an exam that reproduction in protozoa, asexual reproduction in protozoa is by which of the following. So you should know that it is by binary fusion 
by multiple fission or by body. And it's very important to know that multiple fission is also known as schizogony or merogony. So it's just important that you have an overview of the features of the protozoa. We are still going to look at these more in detail in future classes. So having known the features of the protozoa, let's look at the classification of protozoa. The sub-kingdom protozoa is classified into seven phyla. The seven phyla are one Sarcomasticophora, two Labyrinthomorpha, three Aplicompessa, Mysozoa, Microspora, Acetospora, and lastly Ciliophora. So these are the seven phyla under the sub-kingdom protozoa. So in the next video, we'll analyze each of these phylum and look at their distinct characteristics.